Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a couple of good unboxings today. This might be a slightly longer video than usual. Starting off with this one. I bought this giant guitar box, I think about two months ago. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna get to do the full review and demo of this model. So I thought I'd throw it in within the unboxing series because it was kind of interesting. We've talked about the Gibson demo shop on this channel before, but just in case you're not familiar, that's where Gibson sells off some prototypes occasionally, as well as like just leftover guitars from the Juskowitz era, pretty much. I mean, you see 2014 guitars there sometimes. <laughs> it's just crazy how much stuff they have laying around in their warehouse that they're cleaning out under new ownership. And some things are good deals, the other times not so much. I mean, you just kind of have to pick and choose what interests you. But it was a couple of days before Christmas that they listed some additional prototypes. But this time, from Epiphone. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, I, I didn't really know, are the Epiphones considered collectible? It really depends on what. But what I did not realize when looking at these things is, they upgraded them with Gibson hard shell cases and they sold them at regular retail value. So somebody out there got a $500 Epiphone with a like $300 Gibson guitar case. But I didn't want to be that guy that bought them all because I just happened to see it when they all got launched. And these guys restock their shop usually on Wednesdays now, like Wednesdays between like 11 to 1 p.m. But sometimes it's on Tuesday, sometimes it's on a Monday. You never know, you just have to always be watching watching, but they do hint at like the good ones on Instagram, usually a day or two before to get you hyped up. But what did I get? It's the prototype J200 original collection, you know, acoustic guitar. This is like a very high end Epiphone, like retail value for these guys is $899. So what exactly makes this special? I mean, pretty much just that. I mean, there's been J200 Epiphones before, but not with this particular headstock. So that's something else that kind of makes it special. But you'll notice, you know, I think Cesar is watching my videos and taking my advice. He's actually signing these now because I had said that first time when I bought a bunch of those prototypes that I think it'd be cool if he like signed the COA, said, hey, this is a Gibson prototype thing. So I think it's a nice little touch that he signed the back of the headstock. And if I remember correctly, yeah, they even gave it a certificate of authenticity where he also signs it to verify that it's a prototype. No, this thing's actually pretty cool. They even give you a Gibson strap. Nice. And one of the nice Gibson Canada cases. I mean, this this was a steal and a half. I kind of regret, you know, waiting as long as I did because, again, I was kind of unsure. Are Epiphones seen as collectible? But man, this feels good. Like, sometimes Epiphones have that epiphone feel to them, like they have a weird satin. This is more of like a, uh, I would call it a semi-gloss to the point where it's not necessarily sticky, but yet it's not that normal satin feel. The action looks pretty good on this thing too. We'll have to give it a couple of strums. I, I've got to say I'm impressed with this thing. Like this is an informal review, but I was kind of expecting it to sound kind of chintzy. Like sometimes like a cheaper acoustic guitar will, but I mean, this thing projects really well. I'm really glad I uh, gave it a chance. I mean, it's not heavily figured or anything, but it appears to have been made of, you know, semi what decent quality. And on top of that, you can also plug it in. I mean, $899 might sound expensive for an Epiphone, but I mean, J200s are the top of the line, you know, Gibson stuff. So having the Epiphone version, the only thing I don't like visually on this thing is this, the way that they do the binding and it curves onto the headstock. Fun fact, this was the last Epiphone prototype to sell because, you know, it was the most expensive. And what is that on the side of my box here? Looks like I got another one of those Gibson Christmas ornaments. These things are pretty cool. 
All right, and today we actually have a sponsor of the video and that goes to Donner. Donner is a company that mainly sells on Amazon, so I'll leave the Amazon links in the description if you're interested in checking their products out. And they create budget level guitars, musical instruments. I mean, it's not just what you see in this box. They do a whole bunch of stuff. And they've sponsored an episode before where we checked out one of their S-type guitars that came in like a, a little pack of some sort. But this time they asked me to unbox this on the show and it's their starter kit of an electric bass. So first off, straight out of the box, you get this, you know, slightly premium gig bag. I mean, it's not a really thin type thing. It's got a little bit of foam to it. Yeah, the zipper feels okay. But as far as the base itself, let's take a look at this thing. Oh, wow. That's pretty nice. Now, if you want to know why I was so quick to say this is actually pretty nice, it's not just because this is a sponsored unboxing, it's because of the neck feel. It's not raw and satin. Like it's still slightly satin, but it has more of a professional polished gloss feel to it. I'm not feeling any of the fret ends. That almost looks like an ebony fretboard, but it's not. Once you actually start feeling it, it's just the uh, the regular quality. I wonder if they're dyeing that to kind of match the base. I mean, this actually looks pretty good for the price point. You can check them out on Amazon. Currently, they're listed at $149.99, so they're not the cheapest ones out there. So if you're looking for a base that's like in between, you know, bottom of the barrel budget level and intermediate, I, I think this would definitely fall within that. That headstock is giant <laughs> and it reads Donner Standard Series. Okay. Looks like we get a premium Donner instrument cable. I gotta tell you guys, I like these cables. I actually used the one from the last time, so I'm happy to have that. But I do find it strange that they give you a cable, but they don't give you a, an amp. But I guess the whole idea is you buy a higher quality amp. You actually get a halfway decent strap too. Some basic setup tools. As far as the action, I mean, it looks okay. You can probably lower that a little bit if you want. I will say the neck feels really flat. Like there's not much of a radius to it at all. So if you like that, I think you'll enjoy this bass. Cool. So if you're interested in checking out Donner's products, I will leave a link in the description. And thank you Donner for sponsoring another episode of the Trogwiz Guitar Show. Let's move on to our next one. Next up here, I actually have uh, something from PRS. I uh, reached out to them to see, hey, can I get one of them Lunar Ice directly from you guys? And they're like, Nah, sorry. We couldn't even get a hold of one for our live streaming event. I think they had to take it back from John Mayer. But they said, hey, to make up for that, how about we uh, send you one of our new tuners? And it's like, yeah, sure. There's a nice little note here that says, I hope you enjoy your new tuner. Oh, sweet. They even sent me some pics. But anyways, I, I've been losing my clip-on tuners lately, and I have a pedal one, it's just I don't have a very good power supply for it, so I prefer these clip-on ones. And what I particularly liked about this new tuner of theirs is that it doesn't utilize batteries, so you don't have to worry about uh, trying to find those watch batteries to power your snarks or if they die and whatnot, because this one's rechargeable. I mean, has anybody else did a rechargeable one before? I feel like that's a fantastic idea. Suppose we can test this thing out. Okay, so when you're in tune, it shows that eagle bird thing. That's a nice little tuner. You guys can check them out if you want. I didn't have to feature it in an unboxing episode, but I gotta say, I'm falling in love with this thing. This is a nice little piece of kit. That definitely makes me uh, interested in checking out the new Orianthi and uh, Tom Petty SJ200s that we've got coming out this year. 
Our next ones came in as a pair and they're leaving as a pair, just going to different locations. We are talking about the Captain Kirk Douglas new SGs. These things are fantastic. I was completely overwhelmed trying to demo every single absolute tonal possibility and I had some people calling me out saying I forgot one. Just the middle pickup. Nope, I didn't forget it. It's just not possible with this setup. Because you got to remember, your toggle switch does not actually ever select just the middle pickup with anything else. It's just neck, bridge, or neck and bridge, like the traditional middle position. So even though it seems that you could just uh, roll these guys off and be able to get your middle pickup and then also get a split, that is one thing that you cannot do with the stock wiring. Now, now if you were to cut this out of the circuit and just run it as a volume blender switch, kind of like the uh, Mickey Baker master tone, then you could get that. But I don't know if you want to do that or not. I guess it's an option for somebody. But I was kind of surprised. My green one sold way quicker than my black one. I mean, we're still talking within like 48 hours or so. So these are definitely very popular new guitars for Gibson. And they sound fantastic. Great for recording. Check out the full review and demo if you missed it. the Miyavi Telecaster. This thing sold really quickly and I was a little bit worried buying this one, bringing it to the USA. I didn't know if there'd be many fans over here or not willing to pay what it would cost to get one of these. You'll notice I gave it a hard shell case because I really don't feel comfortable selling something to someone for $3,000 and giving them a gig bag. So I went ahead and ordered one of these TSA latched versions of the Fender case. They fit the Telecasters really snugly. They work great for that. The Stratocasters, I noticed they kind of move. But this was a crazy telly. I had a great time tearing it apart. One of these days I need to actually figure out how to uh, use these sustainers in a way that makes more sense than just uh, doing my little ghosty sound or siren sound as some people would say. But Miyavi, quite the interesting guitar player. So check out this review and demo just in case you happen to have missed it. I mean, it's a telly with a trem system that still looks semi what traditional and has a sustainer pickup. Crazy stuff. And our last one to pack up in this whole packing extravaganza is the Strat Jazz Deluxe. Is that what it is or is it Jazz Strat Deluxe? I can't remember. This one, I don't think they named it very good. It's strange. It's a weird guitar. It wasn't my favorite, but you know, you kind of grow to love its quirkiness. But I'm really looking forward to the final installment of the Parallel Universe Volume 2. The Sparkomatic, I think they call it. I'm not sure when it's going to come out, but I would be guessing we'll be seeing that thing get released soon. But you can check out the full review and demo for my final thoughts on this particular guitar. The one thing that I did get out of all this is that the Rosewood necks actually feel pretty good once you polish them up. So let's go ahead and get this off to its new home. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning into this boxing unboxing episode. I hope you enjoyed getting to see all the cool guitars. Don't forget to visit our sponsor Donner and I'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.